Time now for one full hour of nitro-fueled NHRA talk. It's the Straight Line, brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Now your hosts, Marty Huff and 10-time NHRA winner Doug Herbert. You're listening to The Straight Line on drag racing at MRN.com. Thanks for being here for our one hour of horsepower. Appreciate you joining us. Texas Top Fuel winner Richie Crampton will be here. We'll talk Pro Stock Bikes with second points runner Eddie Craywick and five-time Las Vegas Wally winner Ron Caps joins us as well. The burnout is complete, and we are set to launch another edition of The Straight Line. Welcome in across the country, around the world, wherever you may be. This is The Straight Line on MRN.com, along with four-time IHRA Top Fuel champion and ten-time NHRA national event winner Doug Herbert. I am Marty Huff, uh, getting ready for Las Vegas. But uh, you this weekend uh, were in a, a new spot, but a very, very familiar spot with you yeah. as well at Bandermere Speedway. It was really cool. We had a great uh, breaks program with Mopar Road Ready up at Bandermere Speedway. Obviously, a big connection with Dodge and Mopar sure. up there. Yeah. So that worked out really good. Uh, the folks at the Bandermere family is great. The yeah. facility is awesome. If anybody has never been to Bandermere, it's a racetrack that's carved out of the side of the mountain. Yep. Bristol is probably the most similar one to yeah. it. Uh, but it's just a Finley. It's kind of like a t- toss between Bristol and Norwalk, like yeah. you know, because you got a family running it. Mm-hmm. But it's a you know the scenery is incredible. So had a great, really, uh, really really good break school there. Trained a whole bunch of kids. I think we had about 150 teenagers wow. and about uh, probably close to 200 parents. So it was yeah. an awesome school. Great great deal. Uh, we're getting ready to go to Boston this weekend. New England Dragway. Actually, Boston area, New England Dragway yeah. in uh, Epping, New Hampshire. Right. So we're looking forward to that this weekend. Still have some open spots. Any listeners have teenagers in the wow. New England area? You know what? Bring them over. Yeah. It, it's the school's free, and what they're going to learn is priceless. So bring them over and join us Saturday. I know it's Halloween. Wear your costume Saturday afternoon. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'll have my normal costume on, and uh, everybody will have a good good time. Um, there was a a demonstration of an uh, of a uh, an airbag, yeah. which I've, I'd never seen one of those, and, and it was posted on the uh, on the break site. Had the opportunity to see that. That was fascinating. We do airbag demonstrations. We do uh, extraction demonstrations where, like, we have the fire department come out, use the jaws of life, cut the car apart. It it's uh, it's serious. The fire chief will be narrating this as they go along yeah. and saying, "Hey, this takes us 15 minutes to get a teenager out of the car." Uh-huh. Meanwhile. You know, your legs are broken. You're hurt. We've got a paramedic working on you, putting an IV in you. This is a bad situation here. And mm-hmm. so they're the, they're kind of narrating their way through it as they're cutting this car into pieces. So it is incredible. Right. But the airbag demonstration, it gets me every time. That airbag goes off, and it's like a firecracker mm-hmm. goes off in your face. Yeah. And you know what? It, it just emphasizes the point of having your hands in the right position. You know, you got your hand up here. Guess what? Bam! You know, yeah. people go to the hospital all the time with a broken nose, their tooth get knocked, knocked out. Well, the airbag is not what's doing that. It's your yeah. fist. You know? Yeah. You're hitting yourself. Put your hands in the right place, and all those problems go away. It is a, it's, it's a, an, an explosion when that thing happens. I mean, it really is. Yeah, it's posted on my Facebook page, so if anybody wants yeah. to go there, just click on there and watch the – it's a short slow-motion video. It's 15, 20 seconds, mm-hmm. something like that. But it's really cool, so I, I'd recommend going there, check it out and experience what kind of force those airbags come yeah. out with. No. And it's not just the airbag in your face. There's airbags in the seat. There's curtain airbags that come down from the yeah. windows. Uh, there's knee airbags in a lot of cars. So a lot of safety devices built into these cars. And what we do is work with the fire department so that they get a chance to work on new cars with new technology so they know how to disarm these airbags. Because imagine that. You're going in there with the jaws of life. Oh, sure. Cutting the car apart. Bam, the airbag goes off in your face. Guess what? Then the fireman goes to the yeah. hospital, too. So they enjoy working with us and doing some training as well as educating the public yeah. and making it better for everybody. Yeah, at the end absolutely. Of the day. Um, if, they want, uh, if people want more information, where do they go? Uh, PutOnTheBrakes.org. So go to PutOnTheBrakes.org. We'll frequently ask questions on there, information, schedule. Sign up for this week in New England Dragway. Come out. I'll be there. Uh, Mimi will be there. Our whole crew will be there. So come out and say hi and if if uh, even if you don't have a teenager come out and volunteer help yeah, us kick sure. cones and pick cones up and <laughs> move them around so and it'll be you know you'll have fun doing that as well 
Uh, some good news and some bad news to report. Uh, we'll start with the, the bad news is that the one of the John Force racing transporters transporting the uh, dragster that Brittany Force drives was involved in an incident late yesterday. Um, the good news is is that uh, nobody was hurt in the accident. Uh, uh, just got off the phone just before we got on the air with Elon Warner, the PR representative, PR extraordinaire with John Force Racing. Kind of let me in on what uh, what was going on. Uh, the, uh, the the tractor driver and the person that was involved in the incident. There was a car that um, uh, got tangled up with the uh, with the driver. And both are uninjured, unfortunately. Um, the uh, the tractor and the trailer are complete losses. So now they've got to, uh, with the uh, the help of Freightliner, who was, supports John Force Racing a lot, and uh, and they came to the rescue. Came with the tractor, came with the trailer. They got the uh, the the, uh, the car and and everything else that they could get on back onto a new fresh set of wheels. They are on their way to Las Vegas. They will be there with bells on. And uh, well, they get their car be- and all their stuff. But like we were talking about earlier, it's not just the car right. and you know having the, their stuff there. Everything's organized. It makes it really hard to work out of a trailer that's not your own trailer. Right. You know, it's all the little fittings and tools and gaskets and different stuff it's uh, they're going to have their work cut out for them drag racing what will happen is everybody will come together and help them at vegas which is really really good but they're going to have uh the john force team is going to have a lot of work todd smith and those guys pretty experienced they're the, you know i mean they're as good as it gets so uh, you know they'll work through it but man they are going to have their work cut out for them and, and let's remember more than likely and i think this is how this is going to go that um, most of the dry, uh, most of the transporters that are coming from Indianapolis, which are I think most of the Nitro teams, are staying out on the West Coast. Yeah. They are not going back to Indianapolis. They will start. They will go straight to Pomona. So that means that they're going to have to get another a whole another rig from Indianapolis, bring it over, and then do this whole swap over again. Well, I'm guessing with Force because he's got a sh- uh, shop in Southern California too. I'm guessing they probably they have, have one another there. truck and yeah. trailer there. Yeah. For that they use for maybe shows show. or something. Yeah. So point. I wouldn't be surprised if that's what'll happen. But you know, you, who knows? But Force, it's not like they've got one truck and trailer. Uh, I mean, he's no. got a pretty big operation sure. there, so they'll figure something out. And who knows? Maybe even his old buddy Don Schumacher will help him out with the truck and trailer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and there's with that comes um, you know some things that you don't even think about. That one of the things that Elon um, talked about was the the awning. Um, you know, that, that's on the outside of the rig. Well, that was on the outside of the rig when it crashed, and so they're not going to have an awning. Uh, the, the hoses that, uh, you know, they come, they come right out, and they're built into the trailer. Right. Um, it, those will be gone. And so, I mean. Just all those it, yeah. things that make it easier to work right. on the car. You know, it used to take us an hour and a half to rebuild the engine between rounds. Now it takes most of the teams probably about 25 to 30 minutes. Well, Guess what? That's because of all the advancements that have been made on the tool tray and the air tools and the accessibility of everything in yeah. the trailer. Well, when you take that away, all of a sudden, going rounds gets a little bit harder on Sunday. <laughs> right. Um, John Force Racing, pretty big operation. One of those teams goes out in the first round, and uh, they need to rebuild the car. Uh, obviously, they're going to have a lot of help over there. But still... It doesn't make it any easier when you're looking for something that's usually right there, and then it's not. Well, there's an incredible amount of parts and equipment in these trailers. And oh. so when you move all of that, there's things that get lost. There's things that get misplaced. You don't know where they are, what drawer they, you know, because yeah. everything is labeled. Yes. And there's there's a roadmap. Everybody's got kind of a, a, a organizational chart in their trailer. All of a sudden, when that goes up in the air... Oh boy, that's uh, that makes a lot harder to work on the car. So I'm sure they'll pull through it. It's going to be a difficult uh, run this weekend for the Force Dragster team. You know, and and Brittany right now is third in points, yep. and if they would like to keep there. I mean, obviously, Tony Schumacher and Antron Brown are kind of in a stratosphere all their own, but they're kind of running for the best of the rest, and they would like to have a, as big of a, uh, a points finish as pos- best as possible points finish, and that third place pin- is worth some money. Well, yeah, and, and 
you know, and makes it really good for Monster Energy Absolutely. and all the sponsors at Four. So, you know, they've got something to prove for sure. But oh yeah. boy, they sure got a little bit of uh, extra work yeah, yeah, piled no on question. top of them yep. with this cr- with this crash. Yeah, and uh, so uh, our our best uh, to everybody that was involved in that. And it looks like um, um, uh, the only thing that's worse for wear is the track and tra- the, the truck and trailer. And you can replace those human lives, uh, not so much. And everybody uh, walked away unscathed. Coming up, we will talk to Richie Crampton, winner of the Texas Motorplex in the top fuel division, 7-0 and in final rounds, five wins on the 2015 season, and an unbelievable season for the Morgan Lucas crew. We will talk to Richie Crampton coming up. Eddie Krawick will be here, and boy, have bikes got interesting. Um, if you weren't here last week, I would recommend after this show to pull up last week's show on MRN.com, and listen to the Jerry Savoy interview that we had. He was one fired-up Cajun, um, winner at Texas, now just uh, 31 out, and chasing the Harley guys. We'll talk to the guy that runs the Suzuki program at Vance and Hines, Eddie Krawick. Well, and, to, and on that note, like uh, Eddie or uh, Savoy was very complimentary. Uh, yeah. Oh, no Craywick. question about Eddie, that. Yeah. yeah. Savoy and Craywick, they get along really sure. well. They they get along really well. It sounded like there were some uh, others. Yeah. It's yeah yeah. It sounded like the Aranas were getting into it, but it seems like, and I don't know them very well. They've always been very nice to me, but it seems like Aranas get into it at different times with pretty much everybody in the pits. <laughs> You know, so, uh, yeah. but yeah, listen to the Savoy interview from last week. Oh, he was, man, he was, he fired was up. definitely fired up. Yeah, and, and so, uh, and Jerry, right now, just 10 points behind Eddie Craywick with two uh, with two races left. And we will talk to the uh, rider of the Screaming Eagle, Vanson Hines, Harley Davidson, uh, coming up in a couple minutes. And we will also talk to you. want to know how do you win at Las Vegas? Well, we'll have the guy. That knows how to win a Las Vegas five-time Wally winner. Ron Caps will be here as well. Now, he's won there five times, but four of those, and we'll talk to him about that, four of those have been in the second race of the season, which is this will be the second race. He's got some really good mojo going into that second race. Knows how to get it done. There's just some weird symmetry there, but he knows how to how to win there for sure. Well, the there's things race. you go to certain tracks, uh, like mine was at Bristol, yeah. won, won six or seven times at Bristol. So there's places that you go that you just have it figured out. Yeah. Your crew chief has it figured out. Ron Tobler is uh, Caps crew chief and has been for a few years. I'm so I'm sure at least a couple of those wins have probably been with Tobler. With Tobler. And Tobler, I think Vegas is the kind of track that Tobler is good at. Denver. Vegas, there's a few tracks where Tobler kind of shines out. Yeah. And uh, I would say Tobler's tuning methodology is similar to Dick LaHaye. Let's go to the starting line. We're going to make a really good run, and we're going to get down the track, do your job as a driver, and we're going to have a good shot at winning. That's Tobler. Where, on the other hand, you have Jimmy Proc. Jimmy Proc says, pull up there, do your best job, and but it doesn't matter because we're going to win, and we're going to set low <laughs> ET and top speed. But, yeah. you know, Proc's go for the throat. Uh, Tobler is let's go down the track, make consistent good runs, and and it's going to pay off. And you know it has paid off. He's been crew chief for championships from oh, Shirley yeah. and Cruz, and uh, I'm not sure who else. But yep. I mean, Tobler knows how to win races and championships, championships because of being consistent, going down the track, being steady, not making mistakes. That's kind of Tobler's methodical. mo. Yeah. And, and, and while we have a second here. Um, you were talking about the uh, being a little more methodical, and you have to be a little more um, aware of the conditions at Las Vegas because they're probably um, – Well, they're, they change not, a lot. Yeah. During the day, it can be warm, sunny. The track can be slick. Uh, there's a couple tunnels underneath the track going from the spectator side to the pit side, so there's bumps out there. Uh, you know, I know racing there several times. I was number one qualifier a couple times there, and you go down there – I think I went to the finals maybe once or twice. Anyway, you go down the track and you steer the car. You drive it into the good place going down the track. And a uh, spectator would look at that and think, oh, those guys are just, you know, pointing and aiming and fire. No. At different tracks, you're driving the mm. car down the track to keep it in the right groove, to keep it with full traction. And Vegas is one of those tracks where you do have to do that. Yeah. And, and the conditions there are a little uh, unique, shall we say. Yeah. Um, 
dry conditions, uh, really dry, obviously. You're out in the middle of the de- desert, but you also have altitude to factor in there. When yep. The higher you go, the less air you have. Well, true, altitude, but then also during the day it's hot, and as soon as the sun goes down, it gets cold. So there's <laughs> yeah. you know, low ET of everything is going to be at the evening session on Friday. I'm sure for every class, number one qualifier will be evening session on Friday because that's how that works. It gets cool. Conditions get better. Barometric pressure goes up. Yeah. Friday night is the session, and everybody else is just going to be fighting for. And then there again, that Friday night doesn't really mean all that much on racing on Sunday, except for where you are on the ladder, which is important. But going down the track on Saturday both runs is probably more important to winning on Sunday than that Friday night bonsai run. Yep. So both sessions of qualifying, Friday and Saturday, very important for completely different reasons. If you want to be good on Friday to get yourself a a good starting spot, at least in that first round, Saturday is going to be more, is going to be more closely uh, related to the conditions that you're going to find on Sunday afternoon when eliminations start. When we return, uh, we will hopefully be talking to the winner of the Texas Motorplex in the top fuel division. Ricky, Richie Crampton will join us next. This is The Straight Line. More right after this. When it comes to vehicle safety, having poor visibility is a risk not worth taking. Get set for this fall's weather by visiting your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store during the See Better Drive Safer sale. You'll find deals on name brand headlights, wiper blades, and everything you need to see better and drive safer. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. NHRA drag racer Doug Herbert here to talk about safe driving. In early 2008, my two sons were killed in a car accident that was caused by speed and inexperience. After the accident, I learned that over 6,000 teenagers each year are killed in car accidents, so I formed a nonprofit organization called Brakes. Brakes stands for Be Responsible and Keep Everyone Safe. Please visit our website at putonthebrakes.org to learn more about responsible driving and what you can do to keep our roads safe. It's the Straight Line. Brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Now here's Marty Huff and Doug Herbert. Thanks for being here on a Wednesday afternoon. It is the Straight Line on MRN.com. Awaiting uh, top fuel winner at the Texas Motorplex. Headed to Las Vegas where he is the defending winner of the spring race. Richie Crampton will be here. A guy that is and 7-0 in his career. He hasn't even got through two full seasons behind the wheel of a top fuel dragster and has seven wins, has not lost in a final. That's a phenomenal record. It really is. And five wins in one year is that's a that's a pretty good number. That's a if, that's a hard yeah. thing to accomplish. So uh yeah, really a good job with that with that whole Morgan Lucas team. They've been doing a very good job. Richie's doing a good job driving the car. Aaron Brooks is doing a good job tuning the car. And then don't forget, Morgan Lucas brings that car, brings the other team car out once yeah. in a while and can manage to win a race too. So yeah. I'll tell you what, they've got a they've got a pretty good team right now. I think a you know basically a single car team, right? That runs a second car once in a while. Right. They're they're tough. Yeah. You know? No question about it. And uh, this is a guy, uh, Richie Crampton, who is. Uh, as we've brought up uh, on occasions when we've had him on, he was a crew guy. Uh, it kind of learned his way through um, from the bottom end of the car all the way up to the top, and you know, and was the was the clutch guy. Ended up getting his uh, fuel license, and then uh, was the named the driver after Morgan Lucas bowed out of of that ride. Um, but this is a guy that knows all parts of this car it's not he's not just a guy that just sits in there and and lets it fly well and i think there's an advantage to that knowing the car understanding the car and the mechanics of the car how the car runs and works it makes you a better driver because you can feel exactly what's going on you know what is broken at the finish line whatever i used to be amazed by big daddy don garlitz uh when i was a kid you know be hanging around the pit area whatever and he'd come back and he'd tell herb parks or whoever his crew chief was I think it broke a push rod, and surely they take it apart, and it had a push rod broken, because Big Daddy knew everything there yep. was to know about that car, yep. and that's 
how it would work. And I I like to think that I was a little bit like that. There'd yes, be times when indeed. I would shut the car off, and crew chief would go, "Why'd you shut it off?" And I'd say, uh, "It's getting ready to blow up." Oh, you know, you you know, Dick LaHaye wouldn't because he was a driver too. Drivers that are crew <laughs> yeah. chiefs are a little bit different. But when you shut it off and you tear it apart and you find out, oh, it was like ready to explode or the tire was ready to come off or whatever, that's when having all those runs down the track (laughs) is really, really important. Yeah. (laughs) And um, and Richie, really impervious to the pressure, Uh, obviously. When you pull up into the lanes at a national event and it's the final round, I mean – your heart's beating, and I mean, there's got to be a lot of things going through your mind. And he has not failed if, as of yet because he's seven and zero uh, in 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 final rounds. Seven and zero is a good record, and and it has a lot to say about Richie and that team. It also has a lot to say about Aaron Brooks. All those yeah. all those wins have been with Aaron Brooks. For a crew chief to go up there in the final round, racing Schumacher, racing Antron, and you know they're going to lay down run, yeah. and you say we're going to go up there and we're going to go down the track and do our best, or we're going to go up there and swing for the fence and beat him, whatever. Going down and winning those final rounds without making a mistake as a crew chief, that takes a patient crew chief yeah. that is focused on the conditions and what's going on because that's what it takes to win. And and uh, not only from a driver's standpoint, going up there like Richie's done and not making mistakes in the final, being able to win, but you know that's a team. That's a team deal. Yep, and we're not talking about some um, – Light races uh, on on the schedule. U.S. Nationals winner, uh, one at uh, English Town, uh, one at the Texas Motorplex. Big races, and uh, and I think I misspoke a little bit earlier. Uh, Crampton with his win at Texas um, gets ahead of Brittany Force by th- uh, by four points in top fuel standings right now. So uh, it, it's Crampton third, uh, Brittany Force fourth, but uh, within four points of each other. So it's going to be a real battle between those two. Uh, for that third spot, and I, th- I think that's probably the the one that you're looking at. So you can yeah. go back to corporate headquarters, whether it's Monster Energy in Atlanta or whether it's Lucas Oil in Indianapolis, and go, "Hey, we were third in top fuel p- points uh, going into this season." So uh, you know, going into the next season. So uh, and that's a not that's a, a big deal. Not, yeah, not, not a bad, bad place, place to, to be. be and uh, we are joined now by the driver of the Lucas Oil Top Fuel Dragster from Oregon Lucas Racing, Richie Crampton, joins us. Richie, thanks for joining. Joining us, we really appreciate it. And uh, uh, as the uh, as the the thrill of victory worn off from Texas, <laughs> yeah. Well, good morning. But, but yeah, it has. You know, uh, the reality has uh, sunk in that it's time to go to Las Vegas and and do it again. You know, it's going to be a, a tough challenge to try and uh, continue to have success here in the countdown. And and really, it's just uh, getting down to business. So it was good to win in Dallas, but we're ready to move on and do it again. Hey, Richie, your run that you made the first round of Dallas was incredible. Low ET of the race at 3.70. Uh, Aaron Brooks had the car set up. You were on the mark and got it straight down the track. Tell us a little bit about that run and the momentum that that set for you on race day. That was huge, you know. Yeah, and that thing felt like it was flying, too. I mean, it had been quite a few weeks since I had run uh, run that good. But, uh, we, you know, we just knew we had to run good against Doug Coletta. Um, every one of us in the top ten – uh, this year are capable of, of winning races. So um, Aaron wasn't shy about going after it and, and really trying to do what he does best. And that put me in a race car that runs low 370s. So um, we, we didn't want to get caught out by not bringing enough to the starting line. And, you know, we we're able to get around uh, Coletta, which, you know, Coletta was kind of uh, with, with John O's, uh, uh, sorry, Jim O's, release of his book and everything going on there that weekend i mean it was a big race for the coletta so it was just good to get around him and um you know get the ball rolling and and you know for me to set a track record at one of the most famous drag strips in the world was pretty neat as well yeah and no question about it and that final round was a little interesting as well tell us about it well you know i've raced torrance quite a lot and um you know we all knew it was going to be a good race Uh, obviously he has alan johnson over there right now with with Richard Hogan and that's two really experienced, really great crew chiefs. So, um, we weren't taking them lightly, uh, you know, but we don't take anyone lightly, I guess, but, but, um, we knew we were going to be in for a good race and, and, uh, it appears that, um, 
you know, we, we tried a little bit hard and, and the thing came loose out there about half track. Um, but, but so did Steve-O. So I think we're, uh, we had similar combos, yeah. um, in each lane. Um, and, and for me, it was just one of them situations where I felt it's fun and I was able to slap the throttle pedal real quick and, and the thing hooked back up again and, and run through the lights with a 397. So, um, just one of those good pedal jobs that, that stuck and, uh, that felt kind of rewarding to, to win a race like that. So it was a, that was a pretty cool final round for me. Doug just talked about um, being able to feel the car. If, if Being a guy that knows every part and piece of that, because you've worked on every part and piece of that car, to be able to know what that car is doing and to be able to catch it, if, if, I'll ask Doug first of all, how hard is that for a guy that hasn't been doing this a, a, a long time to be able to catch that thing, especially in a final round? Well, I think we're, we need to ask Richie. I think it is hard, but I think it's easier understood uh, from a guy that knows how to work on the car. And that's I, I think that's an advantage for you, Richie. What do you say? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, it, it's uh, it's good to know the race car inside and out. But, but also, as you'd remember, Doug, it's, it's kind of one of them seat of the pants decisions whether to right. try and stay with it and let the thing spin and, and probably inevitably drop some cylinders which kind of uh you know once you do that you lose some power and sometimes they hook up again and keep going but but for me it was uh you know somewhat early in the run to where i figured that it probably wasn't going to make it to the finish line if i were to leg the thing and just stay on it spinning the tires so that um split decision you know you know quick decision to just uh slap it on and off the throttle was uh you, you don't even really have time to think about doing it you just do it so um, I'm not going to say I, I, you know, Richie, did any you, better or worse by being experienced, but uh, it, it just, uh, you know, just one of them things you do. Richie, when you slap the throttle just to bring listeners up to speed, generally, uh, you know, you, you back off the throttle that resets some of the timers, the ignition retards, probably gets in a little better position. Do you grab the brake or are there anything else you do or you just slap the, at that time anyways, just slap the throttle? You know, for me, I, I'm not that confident to where I want to be uh, pull on the brake that far down the racetrack. So I, I honestly, I le- legitimately just just did that. Was yep. just on and off the throttle, and um, um, that was enough to break the clutch loose from the engine, basically. And and the engine was able to, you know, the tires caught back up with the racetrack, and and the engine kind of got its head up again and, and accelerated. But uh, if it's early in the run, um, you know, as uh, as a lot of drivers would do, you'd have the tendency to try and pull on the brake handle to, to once again slow the rear tires down from spinning and allow the motor to catch back up. Um, but but for me, it's, uh, you know, it, I just went down there and made a run and by the seat of my pants did mm. what I thought it needed to do and it stuck. So I was just, uh, you know, pretty lucky really. Hey, Richie. Five wins this year, and you're seven and zero in finals. What's the key, man? You you guys got it down, getting run, getting down in these finals. And this year, five wins in a year is a that, you're you're in a you're in a pretty good crowd. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty neat, you know. And there's been some uh, discussions about that because I actually did look kind of lose in a final round at the four wide in Charlotte earlier this year. So it's it's kind of arguable whether I, whether I'm perfect in final uh-huh. rounds or not. But uh, but nonetheless, um, two wide final rounds here were undefeated and. You know, obviously Dallas, it spun the tires down there and I was able to pedal it and win. But prior to that, I attribute all of our final round wins to the fact that when you give Aaron Brooks three runs at the racetrack during eliminations, he's probably going to have the thing figured out by the final round. And, and that's been the case in pretty much every final I've been in. The cars just ran so good in the final because of Aaron and my Lucas Oil team that... Uh, you know, it's it's just um, it's hard to mess it up when you've got such a good <laughs> team with you like that. So it's crazy to be standing here, yeah, with five win, five wins in a season and uh, two races to go, and and going into Las Vegas, which uh, you know I'll be the defending event yes. defending event champion at that one. So it's exciting times. And um, I, at at one point there, I didn't really think that uh, a top five finish or a top three finish was kind of on the horizon for us. You know, I'd kind of kind of uh started to look at the numbers and got lost a little bit of hope but winning dallas definitely uh rejuvenated the whole team and and myself and it's just really exciting to try and go and have a crack at it you mentioned in the post race that you liked having these uh, last two races be on the west coast because there's a lot of australians that come over for vacations and and that sort of stuff and it's nice to have them all in one place uh, for a, a couple of weeks right 
Yeah, absolutely. I, I always have some uh, some family or family friends or, you know, old people that I, I used to race against back in Australia. Um, they always make it to Las Vegas and Pomona because uh, of its, you know, close proximity to, uh, you know, it's basically the first port of call when you fly in from, from Australia. So, um, you know, yeah, it, it's always exciting running out west. I, you know, I love racing in Las Vegas. It's one of the coolest destinations in the world, not only for racing, but uh, just to go to and hang out. And then, uh, then of course, you know, my favorite track on the tour is Pomona. That's, that's the first racetrack I ever went to as a spectator in 1999 to watch the world finals. And um, definitely uh, really enjoy being able to get down on that racetrack and compete these days. It's um, still very cool for me. And that's one I want to win at some point in my career. Man, yeah, the Pomona's a good one, that's for sure. Hey, uh, tell us about in uh, E2, your race in Brittany Force, and she had a really early light. Was Were you aware of that, or was that kind of startling when she left that early? Yeah, it definitely took me uh, by surprise because Brittany's been doing just a fantastic job here this season. You know, her reaction times have been stellar, and, uh, you know, I thought, for an instant there I'm like man she got me and she got me good because I, I you know I heard her leave and I yeah. think she was about 170 red so um that gives you enough time to like start kicking yourself already and, um I started to do my thing and, and went on down the racetrack and you know when you look up and see the wind light already on in your lane you you realize that uh that the other driver made that mistake and and you know we got the win and we we're super fortunate that she went red because our race car dropped a cylinder on the starting line and uh, we run down there on seven cylinders and ran four zero and and uh, you know if she wouldn't have went red her 377 was going to kick our butt so that was definitely the uh, very very lucky round for the day for the for the Luke Soil team. Well, Richie, thanks for joining us. Winner at Dallas, Richie Crampton on the phone driving the Lucas Oil Top Field Dragster. Uh, good luck these last couple of races, man. You're in the you're in uh, the top three right now, and and uh, you got some guys nipping at you behind you. So hang tough and keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, all right. Good to talk to you guys. Thanks a lot. Driver of the Lucas Oil and Top Fuel Dragster for Morgan Lucas Racing. That is Richie Crampton. When we return, we will talk to the driver of the Vance and Hines Screaming Eagle Harley. He is Eddie Craywick and joins us next. You're listening to The Straight Line. More right after this. Dale Jr. here. I wear Wrangler Advanced Comfort Jeans for any occasion. With new styles and great fits, you'll look good and feel comfortable anytime, anywhere. Wrangler Advanced Comfort Jeans are built with a U-shaped construction, so they give you more room where you need it. And their four-way flex technology moves with you for all-day comfort. In the garage or out and about, Wrangler knows the ins and outs of comfort. Wrangler, real comfortable jeans. Chad Herbert designed and manufactured the first roller cam for racing in 1949. Today, NHRA drag racer Doug Herbert continues his father's legacy. Herbert Cam stocks cams for virtually all racing applications. From street ride to NASCAR and NHRA. Herbert Cams can also custom grind a cam for any application. Cams, lifters, valve springs, push rods, and all related performance valve train. And engine parts in stock at the best prices. Visit HerbertCams.com or call our expert technicians at 800-444-7373. For all your racing needs, Herbert Cams. Listening to the Straight Line, brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts with Marty Huff and Doug Herbert. Big thanks to Richie Crampton for joining us on the Straight Line today, and now joined by the driver of the Vance and Hines Screaming Eagle V Rod Harley Davidson, and he is Eddie Craywick. Eddie, thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. Uh, where do we find you here on a Wednesday afternoon? <laughs> uh, I'm not setting up the awning this time. <laughs> not this time, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm actually getting ready to uh, fly out to Vegas. I got the press conference there tomorrow, so I'm okay. um, heading over to Indianapolis Airport here shortly. Just left the shop, putting half a day's worth of work, and uh, leave the shop and go straight to uh, straight to Vegas. Eddie, how uh, you know we know from talking to you on the show, you're the Suzuki engine guy, and we got to tell you, Jerry Savoy last week had nothing but praise for you and all the guys over at Vance and Hines for building his engines. But you know what? When you pull up there to the starting line, you want to beat him too. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I definitely don't want to leave him any, any, uh, any wiggle room because I know what he has. You know, he, they, they put together a great program. Jerry, you know, it's, it's finally coming all together for Jerry over the last year and a half now. And, 
you know, he's running well. And, you know, yeah, I definitely, I, I appreciate, you know, Jerry, you know, saying that, uh, you know, Vance and Hines does the best job that they can on, on what they give them. We try to do that for all our customers. Um, but the bad thing about it is I know what all my customers have. And uh, <laughs> they have yeah. the potential to kick your butt at any given time. And, <laughs> you know, Vance and Hines and Byron, when he started years ago, he was a stand-up individual that he's either going to give you the best that he can give you or he's not going to give you anything at all. And, uh, you know, well, we've, we've sort of con- continued that tradition, and uh, I think it shows. But I'd say our, uh, our harley Davidsons, Andrews, and mine, you know, are running well. Uh, we, we, we're still trying to tweak on a tune-up. I wouldn't say that they're perfect. You know, last race, I don't think we performed to the level that we should have uh, in, in EP-wise, but, you know, some, sometimes you're on it and other times you're not. Well, Eddie, your bike, this, it slowed down a little bit in the final. Do you know why that happened? Was it something Yeah, to do? actually, you know, I, I feel we let that one get away from us. Um, you, you know, we had a... Uh, we had an alcohol car in front of us that had a little bit of a misfortune, you know, blue blower off the pair in front of them, uh, had to put a little oil on the track. And right where we lined up, I don't think was the ideal spot. I hadn't ran left lane all, all day, and uh, I was running the right lane. And I do believe right lane was probably a smidge better, and uh, I, I don't think we took that into account. And, you know, we blew the tire off. I went from 105, 106, 60 foot to almost 111 109 wow. i think it was so yeah. gave it all up there i i think my bike we, we tuned on it a little bit there and that in the final and uh speed came up went 196 and change i think we went the right direction on the tune-up when you hodgepodge all the numbers together back half and all that stuff i think we could have went a high 79 which i had to go an 81 with a zero to win and uh with the light that i had and everything and Unfortunately, you know, uh, for us, we let that get away. Fortunate for Jerry, he was able to capitalize on it. Yep. Um, Eddie, I'm sure that you've seen the entry list for Las Vegas. 30, count them, 30 bikes. Almost half the field is going home on Saturday. <laughs> uh, obviously, you guys are going to have to uh, be on your game early because you don't want to be playing catch-up when you have that many bikes trying to get into the field. No, you're 100% correct about that. You know, I, I noticed on uh, the week before there was 24 bikes on there, and uh, I knew of at that time of the 24, I knew of about eight guys more that wanted to go, um, or eight more individuals, I should say. Yeah. Uh, I shot Graham a text, and, you know, they <laughs> bumped it up to 28, and then it got full, like, in the matter of one minute. Uh, it was full. And then uh, – I talked to those guys again, and NHRA was nice enough to bump the list up to 30, um, you know, which is which is great. They understand we have a, quite a few international competitors, uh, guys coming from Sweden and Australia and pretty much all around the world. Yeah. So, you know, it, you definitely don't want to deny it or, or deny them or limit pro racers, I believe, from, from coming into a category. I think – had they left it open, we would have gained another one or two competitors and had as many as 32 for no Pro kidding. Stock Motorcycle. And Pomona's got 28 in it. So uh, it's, it's going to be awesome. But you're 100% correct. you got to be on your game. Because if you're not, I'm, I hate to say it, there's probably a few regulars that may not qualify at right. the next event. You never know. Hey, Eddie, so we've talked about it a little bit with, with Savoy, but do you guys have – I mean, his bike has a performance advantage right now. Do you have anything in the bank? And you know how much power it has, so you know about that. But do you guys have anything to to get him here in these I've last two races? Because he's last barely year behind. And a half. I've been saying for the last year and a half that that Suzuki combination is a lethal combination. When you take advantage of the fuel injection and everything that you can do, it's a badass setup. Um, so do we have anything in the bank? I'd like to say yes, but I, I'm going to be honest and say, you know, we just missed the setup at the last race. I believe we should have been able to go 77, maybe 78. I don't think we could have gone 74 just because Jerry got it all down low. A lot of people don't look at that. They're just looking at the scoreboard number. Yeah. You know, Jerry went 103, which is a very, very respectable 60 foot. And yeah. when you got to go 103 to get there, our bikes, don't go 103 very often. They're more consistent 105. I did go 104, 
uh, on one of my runs, 104.9. But, you know, it's basically 105 at that point. But um, with that being said, you know, we're going to go there and we're going to race smart and uh, try to try to capitalize on it. You know, you don't always have to have the fastest bike to win. I've proved right. that a couple times. and. Oh, yeah. It helps having the fastest bike sometimes, sure. you know, but sometimes there's more pressure on you when you when you know you should win the round instead of the opposite way when you say, hey, I just got to go out there and race. Uh, and Jerry also mentioned that there are some folks in the Pro Stock Motorcycle pits that are not as um, favorable to what his bike <laughs> is doing right now, and he was pretty torqued off about it. Um, any comments about that? Obviously, because you've got a vested interest there, but there there are some in the pro stock motorcycle pits that aren't uh, big fans of what Jerry's doing right now. The easiest way I'm going to say it, and, I, and I'm pretty pretty open and blunt to that stuff. The easiest way I'm going to say it is there's probably more people worried about his performance that weekend than they were about their own. That's yeah, right. <laughs> because when exactly. you look at the class in a whole and the weather conditions we had, you know, Erica Erica went 75. The rule of thumb for pro stock motorcycle is you're usually three-tenths off, maybe 31. Every once in a while, you sneak about 28 or 29 hundredths, you know, off. So Jerry went 74. You look at it on the other side of things, pro stock car went 75. But when you look at, in my opinion, how poor the class ran for the conditions, you know, there should have been plenty of bikes in the 70s. Instead, there was one yeah. or two. Chip Ellis, I think, snuck in there and went some 70s, too. Uh, actually, no, Chip Ellis didn't. He went 81 I believe, him and Karen. Um, you know, so when you when you look at that in the grand scheme of things, I, I, think, I think the category was off, and people were not tuning correctly to the conditions. We're usually a, a very good weather setup, uh, that we have, but I think we realized where we were off by the semifinals, and it just helped us in the finals, but it didn't show because I blew the tire away. Uh, Eddie, being that you that you are 21 out, with being one point away from just two rounds away from Andrew, Jerry's 31 out, it seems to me that qualifying points are going to be huge this weekend. You should hit the nail on the head right there. The key thing is come out of the truck, and you want to be – I mean, honestly, I'd have to outpace Andrew and Jerry to, to at least gain ground and gain momentum. You know, that's going to be tough. I think I think we have the three – you know, there's probably five killer bikes in the category right now that I think can go out there and really lay out a number. There's more than five. I mean, when you count Karen Sofer and all those guys and girls in it. But – um consistently, I would say the top five bikes are going to be dicing it out. And when you look at that, that's points. And that's the hard thing. So, yeah, I got to I gotta try to manage to, to keep it under one round, in my opinion. I got to wow. get in there and sneak after it. Ultimately, I mean, I, I'm going to sound corporate guy here. You know, whether it's Andrew <laughs> or myself that wins the championship, it's great. We're in it as a team thing, same sponsor, same everything. Do I want to win the championship? Absolutely you know, just as much as anybody else out there does. But uh, it's it's going to be crucial. Qualifying is going to be a big, big factor. And, and anybody that's not going to pay attention to that is going to miss a, a, a great battle. Hey, Eddie, do you ever wake up in the morning and think about the depth of the bench that you have there at Vance and Hines? I mean, you know, with Terry <laughs> Vance and Byron and Matt and Andrew. I mean, you guys are – there's no one ever that's been anywhere – I mean, there's been some successful guys, obviously, in pro stock motorcycle with, uh, you know. And most back. of them are on their bench. Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> but, you know, Terry Vance at the top and, 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 you know, with Matt and all these guys. I mean, you guys, it's unbelievable. Do you ever wake up and pinch yourself and go, man, I can't believe I'm living the dream with this team. It's You're at you the know, top of the heap. I, I say it quite often. It's it's because of them is where I am today uh, in, in NHRA drag racing. You know, they, they brought a nobody under their wing and, you know, explained to him a lot of stuff, taught him a lot of stuff. I mean, the amount of information that, uh, you know, Matt, Andrew, and, and Byron alone, you know, in the in the engine side of things and working with me on stuff and just things in general, it's, it's, it's amazing, you know. I, and to be quite honest, I wouldn't want to be part of any other organization um, after being here and, and involved with them. Uh, I, I hope my future is always with Vance and Hines. Uh, 
I don't plan on leaving. Even when I get off the motorcycle, I want to continue to run, you know, business operations, and that's what I enjoy uh, about it. But uh, it's there's just so much stuff that we have going on, and it's not just drag racing. I mean, we're involved in tons of stuff, and uh, I, I love just being part of it. But yeah, definitely being involved with with a great group of individuals. I mean, they treat you like family, and I, I think it's uh it's it's it was a life changing experience for me. Is the easiest way to say it, and, and I don't regret one thing. Second in points and headed to Las Vegas here in just a couple of hours. Driver of the Vance and Hines Screaming Eagle, Harley Davidson V Rod, Eddie Craywick. Thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. Good luck this weekend in Las Vegas. Hey guys, thanks for having me. Hopefully, I get to speak to you here in the next week or two about <laughs> absolutely <laughs> telling you how great my week was. <laughs> right on. Eddie Craywick joining us here on the straight line, and when we return, we will talk to a guy that's headed to Las Vegas and really happy about it. Ron Caps joining us next. This is The Straight Line. More right after this. The road to victory lane isn't just for drivers anymore. Introducing the official daily fantasy game of NASCAR at DraftKings.com, America's favorite daily fantasy sports site. Just pick a team of five drivers and stay under the salary cap. Outscore your opponents and win. Hurry to DraftKings.com now and use promo code COAST to play for free. You could win part of the $1 billion in prizes being awarded this year. Enter COAST to play for free now at DraftKings.com. That's DraftKings.com. NHRA drag racer Doug Herbert here to talk about safe driving. In early 2008, my two sons were killed in a car accident that was caused by speed and inexperience. After the accident, I learned that over 6,000 teenagers each year are killed in car accidents, so I formed a nonprofit organization called Brakes. Brakes stands for Be Responsible and Keep Everyone Safe. Please visit our website at putonthebrakes.org to learn more about responsible driving and what you can do to keep our roads safe. It's the Straight Line. Brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Here's more with Marty Huff and Doug Herbert. Headed to the strip in Las Vegas, and a guy that is really looking forward to it is a guy that's won five times there. Four times he's won the second race of the event, and this is or uh, the second race of the year, and we are heading into the second race of the year at the strip. Ron Caps, driver of the Napa Dodge for Don Schumacher Racing, joins us. Thanks for joining us. Uh, uh, did you get to Vegas early a little bit? No. Oh, no. okay. I'm uh, I'm still at home, but I'm in San Diego, so right. it's a quick uh, a quick flight for me, and I'll head over tomorrow, do some Napa stuff during the day, and then we got our big uh, meet and greet at New York, New York. Uh, with all the DSR drivers tomorrow night. Hey, Ron, you've got some momentum coming up. I mean, the thing at Dallas, your three-second run, every run during eliminations, it was you're looking pretty good. It's just the the competition right now in Funny Car is so tough. Yeah, it is, and uh, you just can't go up there shy anymore. You got to go up there <laughs> and you got to unleash it. And we lost a close race to Del Warsham, and uh, and Tober was kicking himself a little bit for just. Uh, for just being a little conservative on that run, we saw Tommy Johnson and the pair in front of us. Um, we didn't know he had a cylinder out at the time, and so uh, Tober thought that uh, there was something a little suspect with that lane. So he backed it down a little bit, and that proved to be the difference. But, yeah, great race car all all weekend, really. I mean, nowadays, if you don't run a <laughs> mid to low three-second run, right. um, you're not even going to be in the next round. Doug talked a little bit earlier in the show about just having good vibes at a place you show up to. His deal was uh, Bristol. I mean, if every time he walked on to Bristol, it, it seemed like he was holding up a trophy. Uh, one of your places, I mean, you've got 45 wins. You've won a, a, a lot of places and, and a lot of trophies, but Las Vegas, obviously, one of those. Uh, do you just have a, a a little more confidence when you show up at that place? I think the difference is 10 years ago, the, that feeling was for a different reason. It was, it was Vegas, and it was the bright lights, and um, you know, it was about going there and just uh, having fun and, and, uh, and, and whipping everybody and taking names and, and going out that night and celebrating. That was kind of, you know, um, now it's a little different. I mean, you've you got to be so much on your game. Um, you really got to conserve your energy throughout the week, and no matter where you're racing, but that place has always been – especially the second race of the year, and I'm not even sure why. We just seem to have done well, and we've several of the championships that we fought down to the wire uh, at Pomona, we've, we've fought back with a win at that Vegas race 
uh, and then gone to Pomona with one race left and been in the hunt. So it's always proved to be pretty good. And I, for me, Bruton Smith tracks um, have always been sort of the tracks I've done well. I was Sonoma and, yeah. of course, Bristol. I've won a lot of races at those tracks. So um, it's always nice to see it on the schedule. And you know, like Doug said, we we got some momentum coming in. We've uh, we've gone rounds in this countdown. We just uh, we're not mathematically out of it, but we we need to win. And if we win, they don't win in front of us. So <laughs> that's the only thing we can do. Caps, tell us about the team, your team, and specifically uh, being with Tobler and being with Napa and being at DSR for a long time. I mean, you guys really have – you must have really good chemistry. I like Tobler, and, he, and he's always neat to talk to because he's very uh, – he likes analyzing things and making good decisions. Like you said, he went up there for the final, backed it down a little, being conservative. I'm guessing that he's probably not going to do that this next weekend mm-hmm. because – he knows that that's not going to probably get it done. But tell us a little bit about the chemistry and, and how good you guys work together. It seems to me it's really good. Yeah, it's uh, it's been great. Being with Nap Auto Parts, I mean, to have a, a relationship with a sponsor that big and that, that, that uh, you know, something you've dreamt about representing is huge. But, but not even that. It's just hanging on to them and, and continuing to, uh, to get them to re-sign. And we just signed – uh, for a few more years, um, oh, wow, it's good. not official yet, but I, I think they're going to announce it here this weekend. And so that that's big. I mean, we're going over ten years to represent one sponsor. That's a huge deal. And you know, just the fact that I think we are—it's it, everything I do, you know, around the country. All these Napa Auto Parts people, but I think on the track, the fact that we're always talked about and we're always one of, considered one of the teams um, to look out for every single race and and every season for a championship that says a lot you know you got to have a great race car and the driver's got to do his job um and that goes without saying but you just you just have to you have to keep after it no matter what it is people think it's a it's a matter of getting a sponsor and that's not even the hard part doug as you know hanging on to one and and proving that uh you're the guy that that they should keep for you know over 10 years that's a that's a big feather in the cap that's for sure big time one thing too while we're on that is the dedication I think that you show to that and, and, and really to everything else that you do and supporting breaks, your brother. I, I mean, I just I want to thank you for all that you do and thank you for being my friend for a whole long time too. Oh, man. It, uh, I remember when you came in at Alcohol Dragster, that, that first race, I think it was Sonoma. And, uh, of course, you know, knowing the history of your family and your dad and uh, everybody, it was uh, it's been great, and uh, you know we're a tight knit family, as you know, yep. everybody out there. And so it's uh, we get up and battle each other every weekend. But um, I love that breaks program, and, and I'm not just saying it because you're on there. I tell people all the time it should be mandatory by the government to uh, every kid should go to that program before they get their license, and every adult <laughs> should go back <laughs> ten years after get their driver's license, like I did, because uh, I walked away from the one we did in Pomona with my daughter, and uh, and I think I learned more than she did of things that have changed. Um, most people listening would be blown away by the things that we think are correct still that we do in a car. So it was pretty uh, eye-opening. Yeah. Ron, you've been at this uh, a day or two, let's just say. Uh, <laughs> uh, do you ever remember a, a time when the category, if, and we'll talk, we'll, we'll just say funny car for an example, has made so many strides in such a short time? Never. I just told a reporter yesterday, same thing. I don't think I've seen this big a jump in performance in any motorsport. I don't care what it is, but especially funny car division, um, not since the 70s of, of probably Snake when he was dominating, perhaps Bernstein, uh, in those years. It, it's been unbelievable, this jump since the Sonoma race, and it's due to Jimmy Proc and John Medlin, those guys, and a lot of little things. But, man, I, I've never seen it to where – just this last race, I mean, we were running three, we went 394, I think, in qualifying, and you would have thought that somebody, yeah. you know, kicked our dog. It was <laughs> embarrassing. And my guy, we're all disappointed with that. And, and three months ago, we would have gave a right finger to run a 394 in the middle of the day. Yeah. So it's it's crazy. It's, it's uh, for the fans, I think it's awesome. For the drivers, it's a lot more stress trying to keep a handle on these cars, but um uh, the performance jump is huge, and it's going to be uh, just getting better and better for next year. That's what it seems like. And, 
you know, and I've thought about this before, and the funny guy that you always talk to is Forrest, but have you ever thought about it that you're kind of one of, like, the st- senior statesmen at NHRA, really, and, and especially in the funny car class, but then you got Forrest, you know, and every time you think, man, I don't know how long I want to keep doing that, you look at him and you're like, oh, my gosh, I got another 10, 15 years to go here, you know? Oh, yeah, and I, to be honest with you, Doug, I, I mean, I always kept myself in shape even when I started out, but I feel like I'm in the best shape I've ever been in. It's just different nowadays, you know. You just the, the way that we approach things. Uh, I'm by far in the best shape. Um, I'm cutting the best lights I probably ever had to cut, and uh, just I feel, uh, you know, I don't feel my age. Yeah, you're not that old, anyways. Good. Ron Caps, driver of the Napa uh, Fuel Funny Car for Don Schumacher Racing. Thanks for joining us, and man, good luck this weekend at at Vegas, and also following up at Pomona. I'll see you at Pomona, by the way. You got it, man. Always a pleasure, guys. Thanks, Driver man. of the Napa Dodge for Don Schumacher Racing, and uh, I think he little uh, let a little cat out of the bag, and uh, it looks like that the uh, he will be in the Napa Dodge for uh, quite some time in the future. When we return, we will wrap up another great edition of the show. You're listening to the Straight Line. More right after this. For a limited time, pick up two bottles of Lucas Fuel Injector Cleaner and get one free at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Clean and lubricate your fuel system while increasing miles per gallon and protecting the life of your vehicle with Lucas Fuel Injector Cleaner. Buy two, get one free at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply, see store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Dale Jr. here. I wear Wrangler Advanced Comfort Jeans for any occasion. With new styles and great fits, you'll look good and feel comfortable anytime, anywhere. Wrangler Advanced Comfort Jeans are built with a U-shaped construction, so they give you more room where you need it. And their four-way flex technology moves with you for all-day comfort. In the garage or out and about, Wrangler knows the ins and outs of comfort. Wrangler, real comfortable jeans. The Straight Line. Brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Now here's Marty Huff and Doug Herbert. Uh, We were just talking during the break that uh, it's really good, not only for Don Schumacher Racing and for Ron Caps, but just for the sport in general to hear that Napa is coming back because uh, to have that big, those big names associated and are confident in the sport to put millions of dollars towards those programs uh, makes you confident in the sport going ahead. Well, it's really good for for the sport of drag racing, exactly, and really good for Schumacher's team. But I think what it does is it just shows that commitment that these sponsors make. Right. And you know what? Drag racers, the fans, I believe, are more hands-on type fans. And nothing again, no, no, not disparaging NASCAR fans yeah, at yeah, all. Right. There's, there's more NASCAR fans, obviously, but I believe that the number of business owners and people that work on their car I'm pretty sure are higher the demographics that I've seen are higher in drag racing so I'm glad that that they decided to stick with it and not go away because you know what they're an important sponsor at NHRA and we need those good cars like Ron Caps out there racing it's it's bottom line it's better for the competition better for the sport in general I uh, want to thank Richie Crampton Eddie Craywick and Ron Caps for joining us this week on the straight line as so for Doug Herbert, for Robbie Mays, for Daryl Smith, I'm Marty Huff. We will join. Uh, we will. <laughs> thanks for joining us, and we will see you again next week right here on the Straight Line. You've been listening to the Straight Line, brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Tune in next Wednesday at noon for more NHRA talk. The Straight Line is also available on demand in the MRN.com Media Center or download from iTunes or Stitcher. The Straight Line is a production of the Motor Racing Network. All rights reserved.